What is up, Sunny Crew? I'm Coach Sam Candler. Today we have a 30 minute intermediate interval run. This run is going to be great to focus on those little pushes of speed. So we're gonna focus on one to three minute intervals today with an emphasis on those three minute ones. So knowing that, let's get started at a walk. I always like to start at a walk because it just gives us a moment to arrive in our workout. So we are arriving here physically, moving our bodies on our treads, but we're also arriving here mentally and emotionally too. Right? There's a lot of stuff that goes on in our worlds outside of this run right here. So let's take a moment to push all that stuff away. It'll be there when you're done with your run. Let's focus on right here, on right now, on the joy of running together with our sunny community. So here as we walk, let's just position ourselves more or less in the middle of our tread belt. So we're not too close to the front, but we're not about to fall off the back either, right? We're very secure here. We'll take one nice breath in. We'll breathe out. And then we're gonna find our way into a jog. Just a super comfortable jog. Maybe you even call it a shuffle, that'd be okay. So somewhere between four and six miles an hour here, maybe even on that low end. And we're just getting our bodies warm. Feel the blood kind of going through your body, right? You think, what, can I feel the blood? But you kind of can't, right? You can feel your muscles heat up. You can feel your heart start to beat a little bit faster. You can feel your breathing get a little bit more noticeable. It's all part of our warm up. So let's add a little bit of speed, maybe 0.5. There we go. So at interval runs, there are a lot of different ways to tackle intervals. There's hit training, your high intensity intervals. So we're gonna go really, really fast with a really long, slow recoveries in between. But that's not what today's is. Today, we're going to do intervals where we're gonna push our speed for a duration of time. And then we're gonna back it off a little bit, but we're never going super fast on the intervals or super slow on the recoveries. We're meeting somewhere in between. All right, let's add a little speed again. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, maybe another 0.5 getting ready to go. How oh, this is an intermediate class, but I welcome our beginner runners and our advanced runners. You're welcome to join us here. Often when it comes to running, the level is really just about the speed you choose. So if you feel you're more of a beginner runner, just go a little slower and you'll be just fine. If you're more advanced, pick up the speed a little bit. Right, it's really that easy. So as we go here, we're gonna do one more speed increase, working our way from, you know, it's like a fast jog for me, into a slow run. So let's go. That's it. So we're just trotting along here, feet landing underneath our bodies nicely. So some days when we warm up, I choose to do a lot of drills, skips and high knees and butt kickers and all those things. But today, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna warm up for running by doing exactly this, slow running. So what you can expect from our workout today are several three minute intervals at the beginning of our workout. We're going to adjust our recoveries in between them as we go. And then once we've hit kind of the end of that three minute interval section, we'll see a few shorter intervals. In that time, if you really have this itch to add speed, that's when you can do it. And I'll cue you for it so you'll know exactly when it's time to get a little faster. All right, but now let's take your treads down to a walk. We have 30 seconds until we get started with our first interval. Our first interval, interval pace 
It's going to be about a six out of 10 intensity. Something that you'd run a half marathon or if you're feeling a little frisky, maybe a 10K at this speed. So for most of us, between six and eight miles an hour. We're gonna hold this speed for three minutes. I don't want you gasping at the end of the three, but let's feel like we're working. Ready? Let's go, our interval starts in three, two, and one. So here we go. We have arrived. We arrived on our treads. We arrived in our warm up. Now we've arrived at our first interval. So, what do we do? We focus on our form. The very beginning, we can feel a little bit tight, maybe still not thoroughly warmed up yet. So, we need to be extra careful on our form. So, what does that look like? Here, We've got our shoulders down away from our ears. Chest is open. Elbows right by our body. All right, we're not out to the side. They're just tracking right here. Hands are traveling maybe between hips and shoulders, but at this pace, not all that dramatic. Tailbone's tucked just a little. We're taking our butt with us. Our abs are tight. We're landing in the middle of our foot right underneath our body not in front of our bodies. So we got that. Now, there will be some people with us today who land more towards their toes. There's some people who land more on their heels. And there's a lot of us out there who have this conviction of which is right. But here's the thing, research is overwhelmingly showing us that they can both be correct. It's about where we load our feet, where we push off from. So whether you're landing on your heel or not, let's make sure we're pushing off from the middle to the ball of our foot. So it's three minutes here. And we're two minutes in. I bet that you feel better here on this third minute of the interval than you did on your first. You're more warm. Your form's a little sharper. Your body, your brain, they're like, okay, I know what to do. That's it. So our recovery is in 30 seconds, but we need to talk about it now. I would like for you to drop from this six out of 10 intensity to about a three out of 10. That should be a jog. I wanna see a jog for most of us, maybe somewhere four to five, 5.5 miles an hour. We're gonna hold that recovery for three minutes. Ready? Three, two, one. All right, so we're jogging. So on this very first interval in recovery, they're equal lengths. Three minutes of an interval, three minutes on our recovery. Cool, seems super fair. Uh, I know we all like for our runs to feel fair, but don't get too attached to this. We're here to get stronger and faster and more efficient. So I've got some tools for us to do that. Now, if you are a more beginner runner and you are thinking, I, I just can't make it through all of class without walking, now is your opportunity to walk. You can walk here, but then join us when you're ready, back at a jog. For my intermediate runners, it's gonna be more about choosing the right speeds for the interval and for the recoveries. So maybe you went out too hard on our first interval. And if you feel like you need to walk now, well, you can do it, but take that information and adjust for our next one. Our next interval is the same exact length, three minutes. But no need to rush. We still have another 90 seconds here. With our jogging, 
our strides slow down. So the faster we run, the faster our feet turn over. So the opposite is true as we go slower. It's a little bit of a, a slower motion in our body. We're not taking as many steps per minute. So our footsteps slow, our breathing slows, our heart rate slows. This pace right here, I want you to feel like you could do this forever and ever and ever. Then you know you've chosen the right recovery pace. We're not walking, but we're very manageable here. Okay. We're gonna get into our second interval, just over 30 seconds. The goal is to hold the same speed. If you think you chose an appropriate speed, good. We're gonna repeat it. If you need to make adjustments, now's your chance, but we're gonna choose that same speed. We're gonna run it for another three minutes, exactly like the first one. We have 15 seconds until that starts. That's it. Breathe. 10 seconds, let's start to add some speed now so we're not late. I'm gonna go all the way up to my working speed. I'll take a moment and we'll be there in three, two, and one. Let's go. So there's this idea when we run that we really wanna engage our posterior chain, the back side of our legs. And to do that, a great tip is to kind of push forward with your glutes. So try to feel that now. Your tailbone's tucked under you, and you're literally pushing your body forward with your glutes, but your abs are still tight. So we're not bowing our back. Our core is engaged, like someone's about to like, kind of gently punch us in the stomach when we're ready for it. That's where we want to be. Chin is neutral. Eyes looking straight ahead. Talking to you, whoever you are, looking straight down at your clock, making sure you don't run a moment too long. You don't need to do that here. I've got you. You can trust me. I'm running too, so I don't wanna do any more work than I planned either. So trust me, look up, look straight ahead. Look me in the eyes, I look you in the eye. I was in this workshop about human connection and they had us turn to the person beside us and stare into their eyes for one minute. I said, all right, I'm gonna set a timer, pick a person, stare into their eyes. <sighs> the most awkward minute of my life. <sighs> Try it sometime. <sighs> Absolutely blow your mind. I knew this person really well too. You can try it with your dog. Apparently dogs, if you have one, really like that kind of eye contact, but like anything, you should build up to it, they say. You really freak your dog out if you just suddenly stare into their eyes too long. But build up to it, that eye contact, just as it creates a connection with humans. So it creates a connection with our dogs. I'm not sure if that's true of other animals. I grew up with a lot of horses. Their eyes are kind of like on the side of their head. It's only it really works. And for a cat, I've never seen a cat care enough to continue to look into my eyes. They're off to something else. All right, 20 seconds left in this interval. Then our recovery pace is the same. Three out of 10. But we're gonna take it from a three minute recovery to two. We're just gonna shorten our recovery a little bit. Three, two, one. All right. Collect your breathing. So our first interval and our first recovery, they were a one-to-one -one ratio. Now we're down to a three-to-two ratio. But I'm confident that this is still plenty of time to get the recovery you need. Grab some water if you're feeling it, towel off. 
but keep that spring in your step. Keep that little pep, right? It's not, we're not walking and going flat here. We're keeping that energy up. So with this, we're working a little bit on our endurance as we work on our speed. So it's this cool little hybrid. You know, we've got long runs. We have progression runs where we get faster as we go throughout the run. We've got hit runs where we go really fast and then really slow on our recovery. This is an interval run, somewhere between a hit run and an endurance run. How are we doing here? You should know that we have two more three minute intervals. Do we choose the right speed? For most of us, six to eight miles an hour, something that we'd run a, maybe a 10K, do more like a half marathon in. 15 seconds until we're back to that speed for another three minutes. Eight seconds, let's build now. Three, two, one, let's go. So many of us are used to running the same pace all the time. Okay, and we can judge each run based on how we are usually running, how our speed normally is. But we've learned that that's really not good training. That good training involves varying your speeds, varying the types of workouts you're doing when you run. So they say that about 80% of our miles when we're training should be easy, really easy. A lot of these marathoners, people out winning the actual marathons, running at sub five minute mile paces, they're training at nine minute miles. Give yourself permission on those days to go slow. On a day like today though, maybe today's your speed training day. Maybe today is those 20% of your miles that are a little bit harder. Cool. I love doing this with you. Now let's check in with our form again. Right now is when I'm willing to bet the most on your form. You're not stiff and tight, but you're not tired yet either. I bet you things are automatic. You're in a really good steady tempo, arms swinging by your sides. But now is a really good opportunity to work on any of those kind of form flaw tendencies you may have. If you know that you're always swinging your elbows out wide, right now, bring them in. Keep your movement forward, right? That's with your arms too. We're not running side to side, so we don't want our arms going side to side either. And I know I say this at least once in every single class. Take a moment to just enjoy running. Our bodies are the coolest. Look at what they can do. How cool is this? I get so grateful. And I know, I know it sounds very like Pollyanna, but I get really grateful when I run that I'm able to do it, that I have a body that can do it and a lifestyle that can do it. All right, but I know enough of that gratitude talk. Let's get down to business. We are on to our next recovery in about 10 seconds. It's only one minute this time. You knew it was coming. Same pace, three out of 10. Three, two, one. So we had even work to recovery on our first one that we took a minute away from our recovery. Now we're taking another minute away. So three minutes of work, one minute of rest. This becomes a bit of an endurance challenge, but you only have one more three minute interval to go. Unfortunately, that happens in 30 seconds, but like, no big deal. Now you've run this same pace 
for three minutes, three times already. You know you can do it. That's proof that you can do this. So we've got another one coming your way. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Time to add your speed. Five till we go. Four, three, two, and one. Let's go. So we know that for, for really for us, it's a privilege that we can run and run together. But one of the things that I want to remind you is that you are a runner. You are an athlete. If you are running right now, you are a runner. I know that seems really obvious, but there's a lot, of, a lot of you out there who think, no, no, I'm not a runner. I'm just trying to run. Guess what? That makes you a runner. And you know what? When you participate in athletics like this, you are an athlete. Write that on your mirror. Right? Stick it somewhere in your car where you can remind yourself all the time. You are an athlete. You earned that title. You are training like one. Talk to yourself like one too. And while we're on that, eat like one. Right? Athletes fuel their bodies for the work they're gonna do. So let's fuel our bodies. That means we're not depriving ourselves of the nutrients we need, right? But we're choosing good quality foods, non-processed foods. Doesn't have to be fancy, right? But we're getting our proteins and our vegetables in. All of the vegetables, except for maybe bok choy, that stuff is gross. But everything else, you know? Get your broccoli in, get your carrots. Get your potatoes, then go for your grains too. If your body digests grains well, go for good quality rice and quinoa. They're great to fuel your runs. You are an athlete. Talk to yourself like one, fuel yourself like one. 45 seconds left on this interval. Then we have another one minute recovery. But after this, things change a little bit. Our intervals are gonna get a little shorter. With that, there's the opportunity to get a little bit faster. About 20 seconds until we're back into that jogging recovery. Same pace, nothing changes there. Still one minute. Five, four, three, two, one. Into our jog. All right, we're here for a minute. Just enough time to talk about our game plan. Our next interval is two minutes long. So, just like 30% shorter than our last one, which means we can push a little bit harder. If you have it in you, I want you to add 0.2 to maybe 0.5 miles an hour on your speed. If you are gasping, and this is all you can do to hold it together right now, then fine. Maintain your speed, and I'm really proud of you for that. If you know that you have a little more, let's just bump it up just a little bit. This is not our last interval, but close to it. For me, I'm gonna add 0.5. 10 seconds to get there. Faster speeds means it takes the treads longer to get there, so let's go. Three, two, one, we're here, two minutes. And not a lot changes when we go a little bit faster. We're not at a sprint. We were at a six out of 10, maybe we're at like a six and a half, maybe flirting with seven out of 10 intensity. Footsteps get just a little bit faster. We turn them over a little bit quicker. But otherwise, it should feel pretty similar. I need more seconds. Is 
So we have well established that you are a runner. You are an athlete. Athletes, they have teams. We are a team. All of us here at Sunny, we are a team. I coach you, yes, but I also get coached by you. I learn from you, our runners. I learn from my colleagues, the amazing coaches here, yeah, because we're a team and that's what we do. We support each other, we coach each other, and we're there with each other, running, stride for stride together. When I know someone is running right beside me, or right there in front of me, it ensures that I will not quit because we are here together. 15 seconds and we have another one minute recovery. That's it, five seconds. Three, two, one. All right. This is our last recovery, one minute. We have one more interval and it's one minute too. So just a minute, the last working minute of our day, of our run. What do we choose to do with it? For some of us, we've given it everything already and we're gonna maintain like a champion. Yeah. Some people they know, maybe they haven't put it all on the line yet. They wanna increase. Let's do that too. Twenty seconds to make your decision. And mind you, if this is not your push day, I fully respect a decision to choose whatever pace works for you. But if this is your push day, y'all let's push. Eight seconds, let's go. Not another point five. Three, two, and one, let's go. So there's that initial min like moment, a couple of seconds where the tread's getting faster, faster. You think, oh my gosh, what have I done? But then you're there. All I have to do is keep up. And don't worry, next time I'll ask my hairdresser to take care of these little pieces that keep falling in my face. But no, I can still see you. I can look straight into your eyes and you can look into mine. We finish this together. Fifteen seconds. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Take it into a jog. I know you want to walk right now. I know. Just jog. It doesn't even have to be as quick as your previous jog. Just jog it out. That's it. That last interval didn't crush you, right? You are in control. Good work. Okay. Now we can bring it down to a walk. Breathe. So this is a really good opportunity to look at your distance that you covered today. And this kind of run, but it's a little bit of a hybrid between some speed and some endurance by doing this type of intervals, you probably went pretty far. So look at it, admire how far you went, write it down so that you can come back and work towards a little bit better each time. All right. Take another breath. Let's bring our treads to a stop. We will unclip our safety key, and then we are gonna slide back just a little bit on our treads, and then we're gonna take our right leg. We're gonna bring it forward up under our heel. Our back foot just turns out slightly to, the, to an angle. Then we're gonna hinge over our straight front leg, so that's a really good hamstring stretch here. That should feel really nice. 
maybe down into our calves. We'll switch. Same thing on your other side. So this time your left foot's forward and your right toes turn back a little. We'll have your left toes pulling back towards you. And then if you can, try to hold an open chest. Get air into those lungs. All right, then we're gonna take your right ankle into your right hand, like so. Squeeze your glutes, that is the secret to this stretch. If you squeeze your glutes, you're gonna get more of a stretch in your quad and your hip flexors. And breathe. Same thing on your other side. Left leg, squeeze that glute. All right, as we always finish, I want you to take one nice deep breath and reach up. When you reach out, you want you to exhale and send yourself love and gratitude first and foremost for the work you put in today. I am so proud of you and I'm so proud to be a part of this team. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.